together in our litany for Easter, let us read responsively. We are not eyewitnesses to an event as were Mary and the disciples. We have not seen angels gathering at the rim of this day. But we are here to attest to a story that has not lost its power during 20 centuries of change and conflict. Sisters and brothers in Christ, take your places here today in celebration and in awe. What you are about to hear again has the capacity to change the world. Your very presence attests to the rising up of life from the tomb of despair and to the uncontrollable power of God. Christ is risen.
and then I invite you to come up here and join me in the front, please. Whew. It's a big day today, huh? Come on up. All right, we got Hi, guys. Can anybody tell me what word we haven't been saying during Lent? What? Alleluia. Right. And remember where we put our alleluias? I forget. In, in the bin. That's right. So because it's Easter and because Christ is risen, we're going to share the alleluias with everybody this morning. Does anybody remember what alleluia means? Praise the Lord. That's right. So we're going to do this little litany that the grown-ups are going to join me in in a minute. But we're also, hallelujah, praise the Lord. It's kind of like we're going to have a big party this morning because Christ is risen. So I have a little bit of fun for everybody this morning before we turn out, before we hand out the hallelujah. You can't throw it until you hear people say hallelujah, okay? So hold out your hand. Don't throw it up. Just hold it in your hand. Hold it in your hand. Yep, here's a little bit. Okay, if you've gotten some, step back over there, okay? Yeah. Oop. Hold it in your hand oh, until it's right. time. Can you pick them up? Okay. Sylvie, you want some? You want some? Okay, just take a handful. There you go, buddy. Okay, okay does everybody have some? I don't. Does Nora need some? Yeah. You need some, Nora? You all wish you had this, didn't you? Okay. So if I can find my bulletin now, where have I put it down? There it is. Okay. All right. Friends, this is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Hallelujah! Yes! This is the good news. Here's some more. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Hallelujah! This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Hallelujah! Christ is our peace, the indestructible peace that we now share with each other. Hallelujah! Out to some people? Throw it up. Okay. Hallelujah. Throw it up. Good Here, job. guys. Here, go hand these out to people for me. Go give one to everybody. That's okay. It's all right. just, we're just, just giving them, them to give people. Give them to people. Huh? Just giving them out. Hey, Tommy. You want to hand these out to people? Got some? There you go. You want to go hand them out, Sophia? You want to go, buddy, go up the side and hand these out, okay? Go up the side. Sylvie, you want to give one away? I need to give it to you.
That's the hardest part of the worship service. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Speak to us now as we hear your word, as you have spoken to your people throughout the ages. On this Easter morning, reveal yourself to us and your hope for our lives, that we might live as your Easter people. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture lesson is from Psalm 118. Verses 1 and 2, and then we move to verse 19. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, and I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second lesson is from the Gospel of Mark in the 16th chapter of the first eight verses. Listen once more for the word of God for you this day. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. May God bless all these readings, but most importantly, our understanding of these portions of God's holy word. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Through these very human words, may your holy word be heard and lived. Amen. He is going ahead to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to no one, for they were afraid. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, says the psalmist. Finally, this is what all the other Gospels say. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Death and all its power is destroyed. He appeared to the women and then to the twelve and to many other faithful witnesses. This is what all the other Gospels say. But not Mark. Most scholars believe that the original Gospel of Mark ends with the words that you just heard. The remaining verses are a later addition by the church who perhaps for good reason felt embarrassed by the lack of celebration of this original ending. For Mark, even Jesus' closest friends and relatives were so terrified that they left the tomb and said nothing to anyone. And with that, the first of four Gospels ever written comes to a crashing thud. Is it any wonder the church was embarrassed? Even the added verses don't do much better compared to the other Gospels. Not exactly an Easter parade kind of ending, is it? So if this is what we have this morning, then what is Mark, what is God, trying to tell us in this version of the story? Could it be that for Mark, even three years spent face to face with this Jesus, day in and day out, are not enough to make him understandable. More than any of the other Gospels, Mark may be showing us that no amount of patience or wisdom or even badgering will make eyes open that are incapable of seeing. In spite of all the signs and wonders and miracles, the disciples were just incapable of getting it. Listen, I cannot begin to count the days where I just don't get it. Like these disciples, I try to make sense out of what can only be understood with the heart. It just cannot be done. It's like trying to explain to someone where the time flies when you're in love or to put into words the majesty of the Amen Chorus at the end of Handel's Messiah, or to capture the delight of a smile of a three-year-old 
who finds the silver egg at the Easter egg hunt. Sometimes words fail us. Sometimes what is right before our very eyes fails us. Sometimes, like the disciples, our own personal experience of eating and sleeping with Jesus day in and day out fails us. And all that there is left to do is go to Galilee. That's where Jesus went, according to the young man in white, sitting on the right side in the tomb. Do not be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. He has gone on ahead of us to Galilee. That's the promise of the young man in white and the promise of Jesus. But even on our better days like today, even on those days when we pray and we listen intently and pay close attention, even on these days, sometimes the very best we can do is go to the tomb. We go back to the tomb looking for a continuation of the relationship to take up where we left off, to finish all the unfinished business, to make amends, to say, I'm sorry, or forget about the 30 bucks you owe me, or the hundred other things you meant to say when you had the chance. We go back to the tomb to say, I love you, or I forgive you, or to do anything that we've put off until it was just too late. We grow old counting all the times when we could have held our tongues, when we could have tried harder to understand, could have listened more carefully, could have followed through with just one promise. And now we go to the tomb remembering all those could-haves, all those should-haves, thinking that somehow this time we can make it all turn out right. This time we can finally make it all come out even. We rehearse our if-onlys over and over in our heads, but the weight of all of our missed moments is just too great to overcome. No amount of fault-finding or blaming or scapegoating will bring life into this tomb. Death hangs heavy in the air, and no amount of burial spice can lift it. Look, said the young man in white, Go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. One of my dear friends and mentors, a colleague, asks, How would it be to be told by a stranger waiting there for you that you have come to the wrong place? To be told that you have come to the wrong place to mourn as well as the wrong place to pray for new life. How would it be to be told that the new life has already happened but is waiting for you far away and may even be at a place from which you started out in the first place? Imagine. Imagine the new life that we spend all of our energy looking for when we screw up our courage, get the kids dressed, kicking and screaming, prying the significant other away from the couch or the repairs or the garden, Finally, making it here only to find out that we've come to the wrong place. And there's someone at the door saying that the new life that you are looking for is back home, buried right in the middle of everything that you hoped coming here would redeem. I believe with all my heart that Jesus came out of that tomb and said, We are not done yet. We haven't even scratched the surface. Go back home. Go back to the beginning. You can do this. Start over. Let's take it from the top. I'll be waiting there for you. I have journaled ever since I was a teenager. 
Journaling gives me just enough distance and perspective to see what is often just too close to be in focus. One day I remembered these words came to me and I have no idea why. I was writing about something else entirely. I wrote them down and I kept them on a board in front of me so that I could see them every day. The words were, go, give, listen, wait, forgive, love. Again, go, give, listen, wait, forgive, love. When I was a child, I was surrounded by music day and night. My mother was a piano teacher, an organist, and a, a accompanist at a dance school. I had to earn my allowance every week, and so in addition to my regular chores, if I came in the back door and was very quiet and didn't disturb her lessons, I got paid a little bit extra every week. I, on any given day, I would be walking back to my room, getting ready to do my homework, and I would hear my mother in the front by the piano saying, okay, let's take it from the top. Galilee is from an old Aramaic word that means circle. So it is not a surprise that going to Galilee means going back to where it all began, back to the Jordan, back to the river, back to a baptism and a temptation and to choosing disciples, those from whom, from society, religious or otherwise, had already labeled as throwaways. Going to Galilee means that the seemingly insurmountable, run-down, worthless mess that we may find ourselves in in the middle of any given day just could be the very kingdom of God. You see, we're going back to the beginning, spending all of our time on the unimportant stuff, you know. It's the stuff that we go through every day in order to get to the stuff that we really think matters. We go to Galilee through the endless nights with the child who just won't decide to sleep through the night or the one more meaningless meeting to have another meeting to decide another meeting meeting where nothing gets done. Or those public inanimate moments with others whose names we never know, not 25 feet away from us all day long, strangers in the elevators, in the stores, on the sidewalk, down the grocery aisles, in the theater, in the ball game, at the restaurant. And Jesus says it is precisely, precisely these throwaway moments, these times when we have already determined are worthless and unredeemable, and these throwaway people in them who are at the very center of going to Galilee. It is the cast-offs and the ne'er-do-wells. It is the scales and the arpeggios and the journey that we have to go through in order to really start making music, really start living. And before we even know it, before we can ever hear it ourselves, God and all of God's angels are dancing to the tune. In the early 1970s, the musical that changed Broadway forever was born. And it begins with these words, step, kick, kick, knee, kick, touch. Again, step, kick, kick, knee, kick, touch. Chorus line is about the throwaway moments in the lives of several people who are not even in a musical yet. All they're doing is trying to get in one. They are rehearsing. They are practicing. And of course, we discover that this is really no rehearsal. Through heartfelt stories and incredible agonies, we get to see their lives close up. Step, kick, kick, knee, kick, touch. What does it mean to go to Galilee? It means starting over and being baptized. It means going out into the wilderness and being tempted. It means going among the poor to find followers, healing their diseases and spending time with throwaway people. 
It means looking at them from the inside out and celebrating the beautiful image of God you see in everyone around you. What does it mean to go to Galilee? It means you see the kingdom of God in the lives of children and that peacemakers are the children of God. It means that those who mourn will find comfort the world cannot give and those who suffer for the sake of the kingdom will find happiness that no one can understand. What does it mean to go to Galilee? It means that you are a living parable of Jesus. It means that you tear the house apart looking for a lost penny, and you tear your life apart looking for a lost son, and then you tear the house down again from all the partying with all the neighbors because you found it, because you found him. Going to Galilee means that you're forgotten how to hate because you're too busy too busy giving, too busy for giving, 70 times 7. It means that you remember you are salt of the earth and will let no amount of bitterness in your life destroy your taste for the world and it for you. It means worry is no longer in your vocabulary because every hair on your head is counted, every line on your face is counted, and God has you closer at hand than any sparrow who has ever sung on an Easter morning. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is not here. He is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Step, kick, kick, knee, kick, touch. Again, step, kick, kick, knee, kick, touch. Go, give, listen, wait, forgive, love. Again, go, give, listen, wait, forgive, love. He is not here. He is risen. Go to Galilee. Alleluia. Amen.
on this glorious day with delight in our hearts and joy in our lives. We offer to God those symbols of who we are. Let us give delightfully and joyfully as we give back to God who we are this day, our tithes and our offerings.
living God, you have given us so much through Jesus Christ. Hope, joy, peace, and above all, you have given us new life, transforming brokenness into love. If the world, the whole world, were ours, it would not be enough. And so we offer what we give this day with humility. A thousand thanks are due to you, O holy God. Amen. You may be seated. As we come to pray this day and every Sunday, we share the joys and the concerns of our community of faith. Uh, we continue this day to pray for um, Bias and their entire family in the death of um, Tom. Uh, last week, a memorial service was held here for him yesterday. We also then note the loss of two others uh, of our members this past week. Uh, we grieve with the family of Joe Miller in her death this past Sunday. And then also, we received this morning word that Joanne Swisher uh, died last night. So we grieve with her family and we'll bring forth to you information about uh, her memorial service this coming week. Are there other joys and concerns that you would like to share this day? What a wonderful day this is. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I did see Joanne yesterday. Oh, did you? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Susan is the deacon that visits, visits Joanne, and she was able to stop in yesterday. Uh, so she gives thanks to God for that. Yeah, D. Yes. Yes, we give thanks that um, D's son Kyle is walking and healing um, and give thanks to God for that. Yeah. Pray for support for our military and their families. Yes, we pray for those um, who are serving um, both here and abroad and are away from their families. Yes. Others. Yes. Yes. Uh, Pray for Shar Ebersol, who is um, in Texas um, after receiving word that her mother passed. Um, so we grieve with them as well. Yes. I thank God for all the people that are here today. Yeah, we give thanks to God. Yes. Amen. Yeah, Joanne. Yes, we give thanks to God for those gathered here this day and for our journey that God continues to bring us on. Anyone else? Let's turn to God in prayer. God of new life, of faithfulness and abundance, we give you thanks for this day when we celebrate how you have paved the way for us to have hope. In a world overwhelmed with discontent, with loneliness, with poverty, and with violence. To know that there is a path to goodness and to love, we give you great thanks this day. Your resurrection in Jesus Christ offers us hope in ourselves and for our own healing. And hope for real peace in all places of distrust and fear. And hope for abundant life for all of your people. You invade every aspect of our lives, O oh God. And while most of us still wonder about the mystery of the resurrection and the mystery of faith, we give you thanks in our bewilderment. We pray today for all your people whose lives have drastically come short of the life that you do offer us. We pray for the lonely, the scared, the sick, and the abandoned. We pray for the greedy, and the apathetic. We pray that your kingdom would come in powerful ways for all who need you. We pray today for those in our community of faith who need your presence and love. And we pray for our world so messy and hard to understand to get our hands around. 
We pray particularly this week for those around the world who are in need of more of your peace and your justice. While we pray today with joyful hearts this morning, may we not forget what the cross demands of each of us. Help us as freed and hopeful people to offer your great gift to the world and to look for the living, to look where you are already at work in our world. May we model it in the ways that we care for others the sacrifice we make in our own lives that show we embody your great promises as a witness to your ways in the world. May we follow the radical call of Jesus Christ to love all of your people and be your hope of peace and justice to the world. It is in the great name of Jesus Christ that we pray all of these things this day and pray together the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in our final hymn.
And now, dear friends, go out into the world in peace. Go out into the world in peace in a minute. Go out into the world in peace in a moment, because after this benediction, we are going to sit. So here is this charge. Go out into the world in peace, armed with the power of God that can let you start all over again. Go to Galilee. We're starting from the top. Right at the beginning. We can do this.